All right, so yes, we are in session 35, and so last time it was a pretty action-packed session from what I recall. Um, you guys had been traveling um, with uh, Van Richten uh, in his wagon um, uh, at full speed away from the Amber Temple, um, and he was uh, basically trying to make a dash for it in the wagon across the bridge. Uh, but if I recall correctly, uh, Clytus was sitting up front with him and the rest of the car party was in the wagon. Yep. <clears throat> and that's when the giant rock flew down and attacked and uh, picked up his horse, Drusilla, which then picked up the rest of the wagon and started carrying him away to the nest. And so kind of a frenzied bunch of activity occurred. Uh, you managed to avoid getting the um, having the doors fall open and spilling everyone out thousands of feet down to their deaths. Uh, Adra and I know teleported outside and uh, he actually teleported on top of the bird, but uh, declined actually doing too much to try and antagonize it for fear he would drop the, the wagon. So it just pretty much let it carry the whole wagon and everybody to its nest, where then you guys uh, made a pitched battle and finally managed to defeat it. Uh, but uh, in the process, you set off a bunch of spells that were concussive in nature and triggered an avalanche, <laughs> Oops. which uh, was fun. Uh, but you guys managed to dig your way out, um, but still find yourself stranded on the side of this big ass mountain uh, miles from anywhere. So uh, after taking a long rest, I believe you uh, made a trek down all the way down to the river. And uh, since you found yourself pretty close to where Berez was and no real easy way to get back up on the trail uh, to the Serra uh, Pass, um, you decided to go ahead and go to Berez since one of the other objects that you uh, had been foretold to uh, aid you in your uh, endeavors against Strahd was supposedly there. So you made your way to it, and Brez turned out to be basically a sunken ruin of a city, deserted for the most part. Um, you didn't really ever figure out exactly what went on there, um, but uh, you did find uh, there was this hut uh, in front of which was, um, well, these ravens that were trapped, and uh, this floating skull. Uh, and you managed to attract the attention of the resident of that skull, who was Baba Lasaga, a witch that lived in there. So you got into a great big pitched battle with her, and in the process of that, um, you fought off some scarecrows, but the real nasty bit was uh, the hut itself actually animated and started stomping around and attacking you guys. A great big-ass building construct type thing. Um but you guys carried the day. You managed to defeat Baba La Saga, and uh, with her passing, um, the hut itself collapsed back to the ground. Uh, before it did, though, you guys had noticed that uh, through the floorboards there was this uh, green glow that was coming that you could coming out that you could see, and uh, that actually looked strangely familiar to you. You'd seen that glow somewhere before. But uh, we left off pretty much right at the moment where the hut collapsed. So I'm going to bring you guys to that map. Uh, you are kind of assembled around it at the moment. Pretty beat up, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Am I at zero hit points? It kind of looks that way, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't remember because it doesn't look like it on the map, but my character sheet says zero. Yeah, you got knocked out uh, I think the I last thought. couple rounds, so yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I know it was hit or miss for a little bit there, but uh, you guys managed to destroy and it. I think everybody was stabilized from what I gathered. Yeah, yes. if not, we'll say that you guys are, because that's not a big deal yeah. to do. I'm pretty sure we did stabilize you. Yeah. And uh, but, the reason I'm showing the inside of this hut, even though you're not inside it, Adrian, I believe you had actually teleported to the threshold, but didn't actually go inside, if I recall correctly. And you're the one that uh, saw. I teleported and kicked the crap out of the whatever bubble of saga. Oh, right. She was actually there. Yeah, she she actually yeah. misty stepped there and you followed her up and then <laughs> you kind of kicked her around a bit. Uh, and then so you actually did get a glimpse of the inside, which I guess I could read to you now since you now have a bit more of a chance to get your get your rest uh let's see so let's see da, 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 da. that's the outside uh, inside 
Uh, the hut is 15 feet on a side and packed with uh, old furniture, including a wooden cot, a wicker cabinet, a slender wardrobe, a wooden table, a stool, a barrel-topped wooden chest reinforced with brass bands, and an iron tub stained with blood. In the middle of the room is a ghastly wooden crib with a small, angelic child sitting in it. All of the furnishings except for the crib are bolted to the floor. Beneath the crib, green light seeps up through the cracks beneath uh, between the rotting floorboards. Huh. That I was not expecting. So, <laughs> is the baby crying? Um, it actually is silent. I say, dudes, there's a baby up here. Is that important? <laughs> Does it look tasty? Um, I go. I, it's, anybody, if anybody wants to join me, you're well, more than welcome. Um, or do you want to take a full rest before touching the baby? Probably gonna turn into some kind of fucking demon and kick her ass. I'll go up there. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> something you can. Or something? You can climb into the the hut now with no problem, and the hut is inert at the moment. Um, is that a bathtub in the lower left? Yes, and it is covered and stoned with, uh, stained with blood. I say hello to the baby. Uh, there is no response from the baby. I examine the baby closer. Is it actually a live baby? Um, well, you actually reach in to touch it, and your hands move right through it. In fact, not only the baby, but the crib itself seems to be an illusion. Hmm. That's funky. Yeah, it, uh, it, it looks like some sort of a programmed illusion that uh, seems more or less permanent, since Baba Lasaga herself is dead. That's a weird illusion. Look at the green light is. Uh, well, it's coming th from between the rotting floorboards. <laughs> Let's uh, check it out. Fry up the floorboards. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Okay, yeah, she's... I need to check something out quick to see if, if something happens when she has been defeated. Where the hell is this? Oh, come on. <laughs> There's definitely an echo in here. Yeah. I think it's coming from Paul. Hey, Paul, can you go on mute for a sec? Okay, start talking. Check oh, test. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not hearing it anymore. I think uh, it's a. He needs some headphones. Yeah, it sounds like it's picking up his uh, speakers. Yeah. Um, okay. So it looks like, um, yeah, you are not uh, attacked by the floorboards or the hut uh, since Babala Saga is actually dead. So uh, you are able to pry them up. They're pretty much fully rotten. Uh, and they come up with this kind of a sickly, wet feeling to them. But uh, beneath the floorboards, you do indeed discover a brightly glowing green gem, which looks very similar to the others that you had recovered from the winery, that were stolen from the winery. Woohoo! They can make the champagne again if we deliver it. Well, it wasn't there three, so we don't know which one this one is, do we? Well, this is the third one. Yeah, it's the third one. <laughs> yep, you had recovered the the other yeah, one. one. Wait, yeah, so where were the three from? We got one from that 
mountain or hill or whatever. And the, this one. And the Wizards the other of Wine. One? At the Wizards of Wine. Yeah. Oh, they, are, they had one. Right. Still. They only oh, had okay. one left. Yes. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. I with, forgot that they had one still. Yep. Yeah. So you got the other one from Winter Splinter, that uh, animated tree thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one was apparently animating the hut. And a as you take the gem out, at all semblance of. Well, it was already kind of inert, but it now kind of crumbles around you, and it now looks a lot. It looks like something out of um, what's the latest Resident Evil, <laughs> like some kind of swamp hut, or something like a, a pumpkin head, the witch's hut. That's kind of what it looks like inside. If you've ever seen that movie, just kind of nasty. And the the tub itself is really disgusting and gross. And it looks like this blood. Uh, not only is there stains like fresh like fresh blood but it just looks like it's been etched into whatever material this tub is made out of mm. it's all dried and crusty and gooey on the bottom it's probably a nice Kohler tub yeah well if it says Kohler it's pretty obscured by all the stains at the moment <laughs> um so what, what's my status as far as healing? Do I need to heal myself? Uh, well, oh. you're still unconscious unless somebody else heals you. Right. Yeah. I don't have any heal spells or anything, so you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would wake up in one to four hours. Uh, actually, Van Richten can heal you. He's got a... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I oh. forgot he's here. He's All he not need, on the map. needs to do is zap oh, me once, and then I can take over. Yeah. He, he, well, he... I, could, I could lay hands on him for, I think, 25. Oh. 25? Yep. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, Van Richten will heal himself because he's really badly hurt. <laughs> okay. He definitely needs some healing. And I'm going to... What's in these cages? Uh, in those cages are actually ravens, which I believe you guys let go, now that I've, if yeah, I recall correctly. Yeah, if we didn't let yeah. them go, I want to let them go. Yes. For sure. Yeah, yeah they I had... think those are the Mardikov's ravens. They did fly off in the direction of the winery, actually, as soon as you released them. Okay. Do you still hear an echo? Uh, oh, at the very moment, faint. very faint, but not bad. Oh. Yeah, I don't hear it anymore. Oh. I, yeah, maybe. Paul, yeah. I, I just used that icon of of Raven Loft to use its healing ability for that 3D8 plus 3. Okay. The holy like, symbol of... Wait, not the holy symbol of Raven Not the holy but... symbol, the icon. Right. The little statue. Yeah, you can do uh, Cure Wounds 3d8 plus 3. Yep. Uh, basically, it that can only be used once a day and yeah. recharges at dawn. Yep. Okay. And uh, Van Richten will also heal Casimir to his full health. Okay. Oh, I got, wow, I got a fourth roll and a fifth left. Based so, on our knowledge, how far away from the Wizard of Wines do we think we are? Not far. I'll be able to bring up the map in a second. I was going to say we should go there, but I don't know if we need to rest first. or. Are you going to do anything close. else in the hut? I mean, I'm not even in the hut. I'll leave that up to those guys. I don't care. I'm going to search whatever's there. Okay. No, there's lots of things in there. Oh, um, um, I see a chest. Is that a chest? I'll open the yep. chest. Yep. Okay. Um, hang on. Let me check this. <clears throat> I'm feeling dun, dun, dun. much better. Okay. And all right. You set off a glyph of warding. No. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And. Jeez. Suck it. 
Uh, let me just double check to see how this works. Uh... At least I was outside. Single creature or an area. Uh, let's see. It would be... It doesn't specify an area, so I'm assuming it's just you. Oh. It doesn't say it's a spell, though. Oh, no. It's actually explosive ruins, so it's a 20-foot radius sphere centered around the grip. So you did the deck saving uh -huh. throw, um, and you... Oh, have, do you know that evasion, Paul? Yeah. Okay. Do. So... Uh, Clytus, if you could give me a deck save. DC 17. Yep. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How much damage? Uh, let me just see. 29 I points. Used my in I used my inspiration. <laughs> uh, yeah, that won't help you. <laughs> yeah. It is thunder. It it's, <laughs> yeah, 29 points of thunder damage, actually. And uh, it actually also, when the, when the chest opens, uh, releasing four crawling claws. <coughs> actually, attack. Okay. Just had to open the chest. <laughs> oh, t I'm sorry. You would open it too. Yes. Yeah, but I would have checked it first. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. <laughs> he can evade it. Yeah, that's doesn't true. do anything to him. Okay, let all me... Right, let's kill these things. Yeah, this should not take too long at all. Oh, come on. God damn it. I can't catch a break. <laughs> what the hell? Why can't I do this? prompting me to turn on fog of war it's like one room i don't need that <laughs> uh you guys uh outside can add yourselves too if you wish to the initiative i don't, I don't to be honest with you i'm not sure that this is even worth going into combat for crawling yeah. claws <laughs> They're pretty yeah, low powered. Um, um, I'm just gonna say that. Why don't you guys each roll a d20? If you get five or less, you took some hit point damage. No, oh, neither of the NPCs did. Okay, good enough. All right, so you guys managed to dispatch the crawling claws without too much difficulty, rather than going through a whole lame ass encounter where you would have wiped them anyway. So within the chest, you do find some goodies. Um, so you find um, a stash of 1,300 gold pieces, which may be more cash than you guys have seen <laughs> probably at any one point. No, we have a lot of platinum pieces. Oh, that's right. You found all those platinum pieces. <laughs> Forgot about that. Um, there are five 500 gold piece gemstones. There is a vial containing some sort of oil. <clears throat> there look to be two scrolls. Ooh, scrolls. There is a pouch containing what look to be 10 sort of sling bullets. Uh, there's a set of pipes. I mean, not like smoking pipes, but like an instrument. And there looks to be a another single stone looking somewhat valuable all by itself. I pick up all the stones, the five gemstones and the other stone, and then I go, hey, there's more stuff. <laughs> I'm going to grab a bunch of gold, because why not? I'll grab a handful of gold. Okay. Uh, I will grab 18 gold to get me up to 20. <laughs> you had two gold on you? I had two gold on you. I gave it away, I remember. To right. Yeah, you yeah, gave that's it right. all away. Because I had 90 gold on me. 
I have 222 I right now. I have 250 I, now. I rounded it up. With I had I had 256 for some reason. I don't know what the hell I'm used. We haven't had a chance to really spend any gold, so. Right. We so, gave it away somewhere. I can't remember yeah. where. We <laughs> just threw it at people. So this weird gem that looks like it might be valuable. So, I don't know. Was there a lot of gold in there? 1,800. Wow. Okay. Uh, actually, 1,500. Not count. Not oh, count. Actually, there were fifty. Yeah, fifteen hundred. I'm sorry, thirteen hundred gold and five five hundred gold piece gemstones. Okay. Yeah, and Paul took the gem. Or yeah, Adrian took the gemstones. So just grab some gold if you want yep, it. Yeah, but I did. It, I tell I tell everybody that I have the gemstones. I'm just carrying them. If you right, want them, just fun. let me go. Yeah, the single stone looks to be polished agate. Can somebody cast the tech magic on it? Yeah, I can. Yeah. The magic? Okay. Uh, yeah, you are able to determine uh, multiple things here are magical. Um, the stone, the agate, is magical. Um, the pipes are magical. The sling bullets are magical. Wow. And the scrolls, the two scrolls, are magical. And the vial with the oil is magical. If I look around the room, because I, it, it's yep. concentration up to 10 minutes, can I tell if anything else is magical? Like, no, apart from the uh, green glowing gem that you took from the floor. Oh, the um, the blood, or excuse me, the blood-soaked tub kind of radiates faint magic. Kind of transmutation. Can I use the detect magic then to learn the... Uh, a school of magic on the agate. Yeah. I don't know if I care about anything yes. else, but mm. well, I know I'm just what I'm saying is I don't know if I care about anything else. I just kind of want to know what that one is, unless any of you care about the other things. Not really, but I think I'll I'll take those pipe. I think so. We should look at the scrolls. Did yeah, it doesn't really have a scrolls? specific. The stone doesn't have a specific school. Like, it's not okay. replicating a spell specifically with a school okay. associated with it. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll hold on to those squirrels, I guess. I'll look at the squirrels. Okay, you can. Uh, well, you can, read, you can read them. I mean, you can read magic. If, do you guys have read magic? I don't think so. Okay. Is that a, how does that work in fifth edition? We're religious people. Well, they could be. I'm just an idiot. They could I don't be divine think we spells. Read magic anymore. I... Um, it basically uh, has a spell scroll bears the words of a single spell written in a magical cipher. If spells on your spells class list, you can read the scroll and cast its spell without providing any material components. Otherwise, the scroll is unintelligible. So, okay, it doesn't look like you actually need read magic. Uh, just have to be on, on your, your list, class yeah. list. Uh, so you guys would know. Um, yeah, I think both of you guys would have this on your class list, or one or the other would. Uh, mass cure wounds and revivify. Oh yeah, nice. There, you guys have fun with those. I have <laughs> revivify, but not mass cure wounds. Do you have that? He I, probably has it I as a cleric. Him. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you, so you could take those if you want. All right, yeah. Dave, you take them. You, they're useful to you. Yeah. Well, you have Revivify uh, prepared, don't you? Yes. So why don't I take the Revivify scroll and you take Okay. The... <laughs> Excuse me, you take the other Bless one. You. Thank you. Well, if it's not on your scroll, if it's not on your spell list, you... It is on my spell list. Oh, that's right. You didn't have the mask here. That's right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I probably don't have either, so I'm... Uh, yeah, I think I'm I bought a gaming headset. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Damn, Amazon really delivers fast. <laughs> well, I bought it. This doesn't mean it's actually here. It's the He's got the 10-minute uh, delivery. <laughs> <laughs> so that, um, what should I put down for those magical pipes? Just that? Uh, until you spend time to attune to it uh, or identify it. Um... And then... Uh, it's magical sling stones. 
Yeah, sling bullets, they're calling them. Bullets? Okay. So yeah, they're just like stones or bu right. bullets that you would shoot Maybe from a they're... sling shot? Is mm -hmm. that kind of what... Okay. Right. Probably like a plus one or something. Yeah, but none of us even Perfect. use or have that, so we can just bring it along and see what sure. we can do with it. Yeah, or sell it or whatever. Yeah. Alright, let's do Unless, one last... I guess we could ask Rictavio or Casimir if they... I've never seen them with a slingshot. Do either of you like slingshots? <laughs> um, I don't think either of them have one. Let me um, double check Casimir's inventory. We gotta find a bard I can sell those pipes to. Uh, isn't Rectavio? Well, I guess I think he's a bard because he's a storyteller, but he's yeah, probably he's, not. He's not actually a bard. No, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Casimir does not have a sling. I don't believe let me double check Van Richten that's under Rick Tavio. You can buy a sling it would be only be like 8000 gold pieces yeah no kidding <laughs> uh he's got a sword cane but no ranged weapon but yeah any of you i mean okay. any of you guys could like you said yeah, it's, it's probably a simple weapon i'm sure yeah it's not like it takes a great degree of skill um so yeah the pipes and then you've got this vial containing this magical oil of some sort. Yeah, who wants that? Um, if I, while I was looking at it with the uh, uh, detect magic, could I tell what school of magic it was at all? Is there, is it like a spell? No spell. It does kind of, I guess, faint transmutation magic, kind of similar to, yeah. uh, kind of similar to the aura that's emanating from the stones, actually. The, I mean the uh, bullets. Okay. Um. I guess I don't know how we ever figure out what it is. We can take it with us, but it's just a thing. Drink it. <laughs> Drink it. <laughs> there you go. It'll transmute you. Uh, yeah, I mean, something that would be... Basically, if you cast Identify on something, um, you can learn basically all the properties of how it works and everything, if it requires attunement and so forth, if it has charges. I don't have that. Do you have that, anyone? Mm -hmm. um, again, let me check Casimir, because he actually is a wizard. Oh. Um... You know, he doesn't have it prepared, but I would say it'd be really stupid for him not to have that in his spell book, so I'm going to say he's got it. Well, okay, technically he's not a wizard, he's a mage, but they kind of use the same thing, so. Uh, he would say after the next rest, he would be able to identify these items. Okay. Nice. I think we should rest right now. <laughs> going to rest in the hut? Um... We're in yeah. an abandoned city, right? Why not? Well, uh, well, that's why I was trying to ask how far away from the Wizard of Wine winery we were, if it would be like an hour walk or if it's half a day kind of thing. Because if it's an hour, we can just go. Yeah. You are they put here. put us up before. Winery is here. Oh, okay, geez. so yeah, no. that's a little bit more of a track. Yeah, it's at least <clears throat> yeah. several hours, and plus if you'd be going cross-country, you got a big mountain in between you and it. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to say I agree that we should rest here. Yep. Okay. So you're going to spend the night or the rest, long rest, in the hut. Okay. Um, let me see if any of the denizens of Berez come to bother you. Uh, what is your watch order again? Can move myself inside here. I have no oh. idea. What? If uh, what time of day is it? I guess what time are we gonna be? Oh geez. Um, I... you would have left. I know you took a rest on the way, and it, it wasn't that far away from here. So I'm gonna say it's probably midday at this point. Because Rowan likes the dawn, so I was gonna say he could have last watch. But if we're waking up in the middle of the night, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, no. I can go first. I'm not really that hurt. Yeah, I've healed myself up pretty. I'm like 10 away from max or 9 or something. So. And I just need to meditate for a while. I'll sit outside and keep watch. 
Uh, I will sleep like a log. I'll just watch <laughs> all night. I don't even need sleep. Okay, I just need to know what order you're in. Oh, I'm just watching all night. Can you put in chat what your order is so I can have uh, it handy for reference? Uh, jugs, jugs, me, jugs, jugs, me, jugs, me, jugs, me, jugs, me. jugs, 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 jugs. <laughs> That's the order. <laughs> I'll, I'll come out probably after my four hours and hang out with Jugs and we can play Mumbly Peg or Rock Paper okay. Scissors Lizard Spock or something. Okay, so it's just me for four hours and then me and Adrian for the next four. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Actually, you know, Paul had a great little mechanic in his campaign when we played uh, the other day and it was actually having you guys roll the uh, D20 to see if you get an encounter. Uh, so oh. why don't um, why don't each of you roll a d20? In any order? Sure, just and roll it one in at a time. Oh boy! <laughs> That's probably not a good thing. I don't know. I don't think so. Good job, Paul. Yeah, well, it's the Pauls. The Pauls roll bad rolls, and then the Pauls get the to be the DM. That's right. <laughs> That's the rule. It's like vengeance upon vengeance. Yeah. Oh, what can we do here? Uh... <laughs> what can we do here? Oh, like, why don't you roll a percentile die? Um, sure, why not? Thirty-eight. You get to do thirty-eight. Oh, uh, actually, uh, roll. Uh, take that back. Uh, roll d twenty. Seventeen. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> Great, look what you've done. <laughs> All right, and I will determine randomly. Uh, who, well, it's actually just either or, so. Um, okay, so it looks like during the second watch period, uh, Jugs, it's, you said it was you and who else? Adrian. Adrian. Okay, so uh, Jugs, you and Adrian um, are keeping watch, and... You spot, kind of in the distance, not moving necessarily in your direction, but through the ruins, you see uh, a lone figure, a humanoid figure, accompanied by six, like, smaller figures that you don't even really notice at first, but it's almost like the train is moving with him. The terrain? The terrain. The terrain. Like, bushes. Terrain? Oh. Terrain. Oh. Uh, as of right now, um, this figure doesn't appear to have spotted you. Uh, you're both kind of standing motionless at the moment. What do you want to do? You're not sure if you move, if he'll see you or not. I try and stay as silent and as stealthy as possible. Yeah, I'm going to not move at all. Okay, so Just why don't you guys... Uh, yeah, he's basically... He's not close enough for you to like make out features, but uh, if you do a stealth check against his perception... I'll see if oh, he spots I'm you. Stealthy as a fox. <laughs> Look at me go. Okay. Well, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, the figure actually continues going off at an angle. He he actually looks like he's crossing the river uh, and going to the far side. And how he's doing that with yeah. the twigs, I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> It's apparently lashing all the twigs together or putting them on his back or something and carrying them over. Uh, are you guys going to do anything or just let him pass? Nope. Let him pass. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to let him pass. <laughs> okay. In that case, uh, the figure goes on to do whatever he was going to do and otherwise does not disturb your party, and the rest of the long watch concludes without incident. Nice. And, okay, so you guys can do the benefits of a long rest. That would fully heal up Rectavio. And, Clytus, you can be at max now, too. And Yay. Me, too. Yep. And so Casimir uh, immediately prepares his identify spell. And he identifies the items. I'll just go through them one at a time. Um... The vial is contains uh, oil of sharpness, which is kind of nice. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I 
keep forgetting I have the compendium right in. Probably be good for his axe. Excuse me. Where can I put this? Can I put this in chat? Don't we have a note? Uh, well, it's in the compendium. You can look it up. It's... No. Yeah, thanks. I was trying to see if I could just pop it into chat, but it doesn't look like I can, which is kind of weird. Uh... Yeah, you can pull up the info, but you can't pop it in chat. Oh, okay. I put slipperiness. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Sorry. slipperiness. That's... There we go. It's okay. not a thick black unguent. Yeah, I was trying to like double tap on it, but anyway, uh, it's actually pretty cool. You get a plus three bonus to your attack and damage. Um, wow! So the scrolls you already, you scrolls you already yeah. identified. Um, the pouch contains ten plus one sling bullets. Uh, the pipes are a set of pipes of haunting. Ah. Oh. Uh, actually, that would be completely used so you guys, because you have to be proficient with wind instruments to use this. <laughs> and uh, Van Richten wasn't playing a lute or any, or a, excuse me, a uh, wind instrument. He was a, more of a guitarist style. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's kind of cool. You can scare people away. Uh, the final item would be uh, the stone, which is a stone of good luck. Oh. Basically, you get plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. Oh, we can use that. How many charges or uses? Or it's, is that like permanent? It's while it's on your person, you get the bonus. Wow. Awesome. Does require attunement. Who, uh, who wants that? You guys can have it. I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I don't, I don't need it. He deigns to let you have it. Um, I don't know. Roll for it. Sure. Roll d20s. All right. Never right. gets highest. Says, oh, oh, oh should I have? Uh, should I have? See if uh, no, I won't have the NPCs roll for it. <laughs> I'm gonna roll just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who won doesn't want it. <laughs> I don't want it though. No. no. Rowan, looks like you get it if you want it. Stone of luck. Yep. That's what it's called. Stone of good luck. Uh, stone of good luck. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Is it in the compendium? You can just. Add yes, it, it is. Oh. Yeah, just add it right to your character sheet. You're good. So, yeah, quite the haul. I gotta find the compendium. So my question thing is with the little would... eye up on the top. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't the hag keep the Son of Good Luck Hunter? Good question. I, I always <laughs> love that, right? Well, she was possibly paranoid that it would get stolen or she didn't feel threatened enough to feel she needed it. Most people pretty pretty much stay away from this place. It doesn't often get it's adventures. probably a combination of both. She didn't want it stolen and she didn't feel like she needed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good way to look at it. Yeah, Whoa. technically speaking, Babala Saga wasn't actually a hag. She was pretty much straight up nasty witch NPC type character that was her own thing but she was able to form a coven still with the other hags so which was where is her picture here yeah that's what she looked like huh. so in any case um, you guys are fully rested and um I can actually put you back on the world map here if you it's wish not to. going into my inventory. How do I do that? So do we want to search the rest of Perez or do I just want to move on? 
there are some other locations if you want to take some time to look around. Um, Do, does anything appear to not be entirely ruined? Like, does anywhere stand out as a place we could check out, I guess? Uh, there are some other locations that you haven't taken a look at. You guys, if you recall, when you arrived, you came in basically through down here and then made your way... Yeah, we stopped there. Yeah, exactly. At one yeah. Point. And then you, that big. as soon as you saw the the hut, you just made a beeline for it without really investigating the rest of the place too much. <laughs> but there are a few other interesting locations. Is this a graveyard over right here? Uh, if you want to check it out, you can. Yes. Can we tell from here? I mean, we're not that far away. Mm. See if there's like headstones or anything. Let's. Well, it'd be like four or five hundred feet away. <coughs> So this, this... I feel like I can see 400 feet away, 500 feet away. If they're like, at least a general shape, if there's headstones or something to indicate. It looks like some sort of a churchyard. Okay. Uh, let's check it out. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. not much here. It's through the fog. You see an empty shell of an old stone church, north of which is a cemetery. Oh, yeah, there are le uh, leaning gla uh, gravestones enclosed by a disintegrating iron fence. Half of the cemetery has sunk into the mire. But there's really nothing else of interest in this particular area. There's rotten remains of a pulpit, an old iron bell half immersed in the marsh lying amid the remains of a collapsed steeple. When we got here, where were we, where were we going? I don't recall us actually coming to Berez or trying to go to Berez. Yeah, we were coming to Berez. Oh, were we? Okay, that was our goal. Yeah. yeah. All right. I can't remember if you said you were coming there or if you just happened. To... It was the closest way, since you guys fell to the yeah. bottom of the mountain or came down to the bottom of the mountain. It was the fastest way through, anyway. I thought, I thought we were supposed to come to Berez for something. Right. Like oh. One of the... Jesus Christ! <laughs> I almost forgot in the chest. Ah, oh. uh, yeah, oh. there is one more thing in the chest, <laughs> kind of important. Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, it's determined. Well, see, th the thing is, it's these items that uh, Madam Eva read for you are determined. Kind of, they can be in right. variable places, so it's not in the area's description. So, duh. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, you find also a leather-bound book. Um, Hang on, if I can find it here. Is it everybody poops? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody poops but you. Un Uncle John's bathroom reader. <laughs> Tome it's, of Strahd. It's not adding this thing from the compendium onto my inventory list. All right, hang on, I'll do it. Yeah. It's you have to add a slot and then drag it over on top of the slot, I believe. That's what I did. Let's see. Is your inventory open within the uh, roll twenty screen, or did you like open it up in an extra uh, tab? What is no, this? I'm looking for? No, I just have the <clears throat> my uh, character sheet like expanded out you know yeah if it's expanded out i don't think you can add it because i have my character sheet on the other screen oh okay and it won't it'll never let me add anything unless i open it up within roll 20. got it let me try that i just added it okay will that automatically do the plus um, one then? it should where'd it go I don't see it. Should be in your inventory. Make a saving throw roll. It might be in the text. Yeah, roll. Do a saving throw once and see what happens. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. I will. See what it says here. Do you have a plus two <clears throat> bonus to dexterity? Yes. Oh, then it doesn't seem oh, to no, have added it. Oh no, I don't. Oh no, you have a plus one, and then it added the additional plus one. Actually, it did it work? Zero. 
Oh, you have a zero. Well, then how are you adding two? I don't know why. I don't know where the other plus is coming from. I don't generally trust roll 20 at all. I know. But anyway, yeah, you can figure that off. I'll figure that out offline. It should be yeah. double, you know, figure out your bonuses and then add it if, if it's not there. Well, so far, every one of these items that we've picked up has been good for us. Does somebody want to open the book? Yeah. I mean, I'm dumb as shit. I probably can't even read. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to open the book? I'll oh. open the book. You will. All right. Sure. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. I would have. Um, yeah. It. And, and actually, uh, your detect magic would have imparted that this book, in addition to being old and apparently written by Strahd von Zurovich, does actually appear to be magical in some way, too. Um, basically, you just briefly paging through it, there's lots of pages, uh, but it looks to be a diary, essentially, uh, something that he wrote at some point um, in the past detailing his past. And I can, well, if how much, it depends on how much time you want to, well, if you, you would have taken a long rest, so that would have given you a chance yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, essentially, if you want to attune to it, I can. Sure, I will attune to it because I hate Strahd with a passion. I want to kill him, so I would read the book to learn as much as I can about his weaknesses. Okay. Especially if it's a diary. You turn into Strahd. <laughs> nice. That's good. And I, there's a huge excerpt that I added below that you can take the time to read at your leisure, which may give you some interesting backstory. That's You're awesome. not going to read it now because it's huge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. No I'm kidding. That is a lot. Uh, and that's actually expanded from what was in the in the module. Um, I've, oh, nice. So that's more of a I, – I didn't want to paste the whole – if you remember, there's actually a book that they put out, TSR put out, I believe, um, called uh, I Strahd. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to put that whole thing in because <laughs> that was like a huge book. That's like a paperback book. Um, but uh, this basically will kind of give you, this is like something that will give you an idea for you know, what his thinking process was and how he handled things and some of his backstory. So. so you have a plus two wisdom to save against Strahd. Yep. Come in handy. Can we all attune to it? So we all have the same thing? I don't thing? think so. Um, well, no, I would say anyone who spends the time to read it would gain the knowledge. So, oh, and I think it's a damn good idea. Yeah, so I would say, yes, if you wish I'd to. i say, hey, everybody, you should read this book. It's yeah. a page turner. <laughs> Over the, the course of the next few days, we'll rotate the book through the, the party. Yeah. I mean, basically, you could spend a short rest or two short rests or a long right. rest. So, yeah, that's the Tome of Strahd, and you have found it. So you now have all three items, as were foretold by Madame Eva, and your companion, too, or your aide, I guess you could say. Your oh, Ally. Yeah. Ally is the word I was looking for. That's what it right. was. Well, then let's, uh, if you want to explore some more, we can, but we should head... To... Yeah, where was the next uh, place to go on our list? We want to bring that gem. Yeah, back, back to the wizards. All right, let's do I it. I want to just carry that thing around forever. <laughs> we're off to see the wizard. Okay. Wonderful wizard of one. Yeah, no wonder you guys were asking to explore Berez. It's like, <laughs> what the hell did we come here for? <laughs> Sorry about <laughs> that. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, so, yikes. Now we're all really zoomed out of far again because that Berez map was friggin' huge. Uh, so you guys are... In Berez here, and probably your best option would be to stick to the trail, 
because this yeah, is pretty swampy and trail. you don't want to go climbing over more mountains. You could take a shortcut if you wanted to cut through to Argen Vostholt and kind of go through. Do we want to? No, really. It would probably, you get more of a chance of um, encounters if you go cross country. Oh. Mm. Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with just sticking to the road. I don't see any reason. Okay. No. Go off. Hurry, let's go to the wizards. All right, so we'll do do and at some point, we were supposed to go visit Madam Ava. Where is she at? No, no. She used to be at that camp, but that got decimated. No, she's at the other camp, isn't she? She's at Serpool, and we were at a different one. Oh, well, Madam Ava like... was at the Serpool encampment, which was yeah. right there. Yeah. All right. Which That's one was, was the cool. one that we exploded? You guys pretty much. Uh, you, well, you didn't. Um, the girl did, yeah. Yeah, that was on the west side of Velaki, right about there. Okay. Oh, what? Didn't Casimir, one of those, want to go investigate that girl too? Casimir, um, while he had a, a certain fondness for Arabelle, um, she's not directly related to him, and now that he. You know, it still has his ability to resurrect power, evidenced by his really awful-looking appearance. Um, he actually wants to make for the castle, Castle Ravenloft, as soon as possible. Uh, okay. He'd be willing to accompany you to um, the road, but after that, he's probably going to go off and head for the castle. Well, you're not going to beat Strahd by yourself. Um, well, he'd love it if you guys would come with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to, but we got to stop off the Wizard of Wines first. Yeah, yeah. and... I try to convince him to come with us. Can okay, you... well, make a persuasion check. All right. I try to. 19. Nice. nice. Um, uh, he's persuasive. Well, okay, he's well, he on, says, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, he, we, on, man. He he's very concerned a with getting killed before he can resurrect his sister, <laughs> yeah. because you guys tend to get into a lot of fights, um, and so he wants to get there as soon as possible. But he does recognize the strength and numbers thing, and he says, uh, "If you'll agree to go to the castle as soon as possible, uh, he will accompany you to the wizards at least, the wizards of wine winery at least." And Check. they are also our allies too, and could aid in. The fight against yeah, Strahd. I disagree. I think we need to find more allies before we go there. Okay, right, well, well, let's go Wizard of Wines. He is no, at I, least I convinced to go to the Wizard of Wines, the winery with you, so. All right, so uh, you guys are going to stick to the road, then, um, well, let's see, we'll make this simple. Why don't each of you roll another d20 and see if we get a, an encounter on the road. Okay, that looks no problem. You guys actually don't see anybody and make your way to the winery without incident. Uh, you guys have been here before, so you know the way. Uh, the winery looks like it's now basically recovering nicely since uh, things went to hell when you guys had the battle with the druids and everything. Um, so uh, Davian's family is actually... You see a couple of them out uh, tending the vi the vineyard, but Davian himself you don't see. Uh, how do you want to handle the your arrival? I guess. Hmm. Yo, where Davian at? Are you approaching one of the yeah, family? Yeah, yell that to them. Okay, um, they see you and um, approach. Uh, let's see who would be out in the field. That family's so friggin' big. Um, I say hi ho I would say uh, Adrian. Hi ho <laughs> Yeah. Actually, probably just Adrian's out in the field. Um, Yo, wait they're not in the field, in the vineyard. Uh, so he wait greets you. We're your family. Uh, he greets you and says that um, he, Davian, is inside um, with uh, Stefania. And uh, Dog, 
Stefania's husband. Uh, and he says, uh, right now they are very, very worried. Worried about what? Uh, he says that their infant baby was recently found to be missing. Oh, great. Son of a biscuit. Uh, he says, if... I'm going to just say that and I'm going to start walking towards the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he... Shit again. <laughs> he does ask you what you were... Uh, were you looking for something in particular or... Uh, we found a stone you might like. I'm just going to keep walking off. Okay, well that... Per gets his attention, so he uh, follows you follows you guys in towards the winery. Uh, you guys know your way. Um, you make your way to the winery, and uh, inside, pretty much it's the whole family, Davian, Adrian, Stefania, and Dag. Um, Stefania is crying. Um, Dag is trying to console best he can, and uh, Davian is kind of pacing. Uh, he looks up as you guys, well, actually, he opens the door when you guys knock, assuming you're being polite about it. Um and uh, he does actually greet you warmly because he remembers you and he's still very grateful for everything you've done and uh, uh, says, what what brings you to the winery? We uh, found your last stone. He does like a double take. You you found the last gem of the winery? Gem, yeah. Where, yep. it, was, it, was it in Berez? Yeah, it was. Did you encounter the witch? Yeah. Uh, she's not alive anymore. Uh, he just looks floored and uh, suitably impressed with what you guys have accomplished. And uh, he says, that that is amazing. Um, may I see it? <laughs> yeah, one of us must have had it, so we'll take it out and show it to him. Okay, yeah, it's a, like the others, it's a bright green glowing gemstone kind of kind of like the what do they call the sankara stones in indiana jones and the temple of oh, yeah about that size not, they're just not they don't look like lima beans they're actually glowing green stones um but yeah he his eyes light up and uh, I'm, I'm presuming that you were actually going to give it to him and you weren't going to keep the stone. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> you weren't just bringing it to like no, show it. As, it. Uh, bye. Uh, we're not giving it to you, but <laughs> we just wanted you to know we found it so you can w- stop wasting your time. Badgers keepers. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is very, very grateful uh, for you returning that. And uh, he says, with this, we will be able to treble our production. And finally, again, our our vines might produce grapes necessary to produce the red gra- dragon crush. He says, for this, I am eternally in your debt. And um, he says, I know we've talked about things like this in the past, but my land is at your disposal. Um, I will do whatever I can. Uh, you had mentioned in the past about doing some sort of brewing of ale of something. If you can get me the recipe for that, I will do whatever is necessary to source out components for that and start brewing that as a companion to Red Dragon Crush. Oh, Minus, hells yeah. You will teach him your ways. I will teach you. <laughs> I will sit down and dictate the magnum opus of beer. And we will, we will, for whatever it takes, we, you do not need to worry about this. We will produce this drink as long as you give us the benefit of distributing it under our name any you profits from this ale will be yours with no investment whatsoever needed from you i i have one favor certainly just name it can can you fill his drugs up because you've just been a bitch to work it <laughs> well he can't brew ale on the spot he actually first needs oh, a recipe he'll drink wine oh yeah he'll I'm going to dump out the 250 gold that's in one of my jugs. <laughs> just be like, you can keep that shit. Just get fill this thing. His, his eyes are a gag. It's like probably more money than he's seen in his entire life. It's probably worth more than the whole winery is at this point. Um, but no, he um, definitely will. In fact, he says that actually will go a great deal towards putting down a down payment. He says... It, that'll allow him to get the supplies a lot quicker because then he can probably go through the Vistani or something and get the supplies necessary. Nice. All right. 
Um, yes, and he will fill your jugs up with wine, the best wine that he's got. He doesn't have any Red Dragon Crush yet because that'll take some time okay. to grow, but uh, he will. They immediately take the stone out to the field and uh, bury it in the its original location and. I guess hope for the best after that. <laughs> it's not like a magical instantaneous transformation, but uh, that's right. where it was. And uh, he's very, he's fully confident that uh, you have fully restored the winery to its uh, glory days. So while we're doing this stone and burying the stone and filling these jugs with ale, uh, what's this I hear about a missing child? Okay. At uh, that, yeah, Stefania starts bawling again and, uh, <laughs> Um, Davian shakes his head and says, we do not know exactly what happened, but two days ago, something broke into the winery and absconded with Stefania and Doug's baby girl, Yolanda. <laughs> Yolanda. Yolanda. <laughs> that, was, that was the nickname my wife, Kathy, used to call in at my, when I worked with Strategy. She used the name Yolanda. Yolanda's calling, so nobody would know it was her. Nice. <laughs> well, Yolanda. Can... So Yolanda I got Ka- Beaver housing. So I got Kathy to play in my game after all. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, she um, disappeared several nights ago. They found some tracks that looked disturbingly paw-like in nature. Oh boy! That were uh, leading to the north, actually. Not, not. Mm along the road but um actually into the f- into the woods like up here how long ago was this it was two days ago are the tracks still visible uh yeah yeah they would have uh they wouldn't have worn off that quickly they aren't it didn't look like they took any special care at hiding their hiding their progress or anything Ballots woods it's yeah. mess. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see them. Okay, yeah, he, he takes you out, and well, he first shows you the bedroom where the door actually was smashed open, oh, um, and okay. the baby was taken, and then the window was actually smashed outward. So whatever was in here burst through the door, grabbed the Yolanda, and then actually jumped through the window to the ground below and took off with, uh, looked like about at least three or four other very large pod prints. Hmm. <clears throat> do you guys want to go after it or do you think it's Strahd? I'm thinking we should do something about this baby. I mean, I care about Strahd, but he's been ruling over this place forever. And... No, but I'm wondering if, if it was Strahd, then he would have taken oh. it to the castle. Um, well, Rictavio, uh, Rictavio, well, Van Richten slash Rictavio, uh, he says that it's known that there is a pack of werewolves on the other side of Lake Baratok that in the past has raided like the village of uh, Velaki uh, and sometimes even um, reputedly uh, village of Barovia um, and kidnapping children. Well, there's a and, wizard's tower up there too on the map, so maybe that's been worth. There. We have. We yeah. Been yeah. 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 That's that, uh, what's her name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's where Van Richten was hiding too. Well, after he. Yeah. Fled. Right. Right. All right. In fact, you guys had an encounter with a bunch of werewolves while you were there, if you recall. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, great. I think that was after you set off the thunder trap, and it was echoing across the lake. So that probably drew their attention and. If so, they're probably not wherever their den is. It's probably not far from there somewhere. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Kill I some say we donkey. go try to get this baby back because I mean, I want my baby. while we that care baby about baby back. <laughs> <laughs> nice while we care tender. about Strahd, he's been around forever. It, the wolves took her to Chili's. <laughs> He looks like a baby. Get in my belly. Yeah, well, um, Davian is, he says, you're under absolutely no obligation at this point. You've done so much for the family. But again, if you, something you would do, he has absolutely no doubt that if you put your minds to it, you will be able to save Yolanda and bring her back. Are you guys going to do it if we don't? Because um, I don't know. <laughs> 
he says he doesn't think they'd be they would have much chance against a pack of werewolves. To stop a bunch of werewolves. I want to save yeah, Yolanda. That's, that's what I'm saying. Let's go save her because I don't think they're gonna do Yolanda. it without us. Yeah. Well, Rick Tavio uh, says that he knows exactly what the pain of losing a child to abduction is, and he definitely is. If nobody else is gonna go, he definitely is gonna go. No, oh, we'll go. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going. Casimir, we'll on the other hand, uh, he really doesn't want to do this. He is getting... We could be a Barakasin. What's that? We could be a Barakasin. We <laughs> knock him out, drag him with, take him with us. And we say, we don't know what happened. You just passed out. A pity the fool that knocks out Casimir. <laughs> um, Casimir, you're going to be like this. Again... He, he's torn. He's got this familiar, familial bond going on. I mean, his sister has been dead for how long, and it's his fault that she's dead. Yeah, but she, she's she's been dead this long. She ain't getting any dinner. That's true. <laughs> she's gonna die more, and at this point, we're still your best bet at getting to her alive to be able to bring her back. Make well, we another persuasion check. That's our, that's our MO. We saved everybody. Oh, man, I was terrible. Hold a sec. Well, one of you can aid another. Oh, for God's sake. I will take the inspiration on this. No, well, no, I was aiding you. We'll say. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I only got a 10. I'll aid you. Okay. Well, aid <sighs> makes you get oh, I advantage. Suppose advantage. Yeah. You aid me but you enough. can aid me, and we'll take the All 18. Right. It's fine. 21, whatever. We'll All right. It. Well, you convince Casimir that sure, fine, he'll oh, go. He'll save everybody. Yeah, he and I mean, like you said, he. Yeah, he's not an We're evil guy. Help you. Yeah, Casimir's not an evil guy, and you kind of helped him, and so and he we does. We will help you. This baby is in danger of dying. Your sister's not going to die anymore. I mean, yeah. Let's well, take the one that's in danger. <laughs> again, he's he's more worried about himself dying than, <laughs> and not well, being able, but and not not just for the he he lives, but he wouldn't be able to resurrect his sister then, because this is the only chance that he's aware of for gaining resurrection. He goes, if if I do die though, you have to promise me that one of you will go back to the Amber Temple and accept that dark gift, and bring her back. That's the only condition under which I'll agree to accompany you. All right. Paul's not here. He does it. <laughs> Adrian will do it. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so <laughs> who is going to tell Paul? I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not telling him. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. We didn't have his headset on. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> What? <laughs> you volunteered. Way to right. suck, All right, Way I'm to doing suck it. one up for the team. I'm, I'm doing it. Whatever it is, I'm doing it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, Casimir Kaz- said that if he dies, one of us has to go back and take the uh, the, the gift at the Amber the Temple yeah. and then from the, the temple and go away from sister. sister. Oh, oh. She might be cute. <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> And very, very thankful. Yeah. We won't let you die. That's what <laughs> he said the only way he'll do it is if one of us agrees. So you, we agreed you would agree. All right. I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In that case, he will, he will accompany you to the werewolf den and um, no problem. All right. I would actually do it because I am a paladin of devotion, so. Oh, fair enough. So, you don't have to do it. I will do it. I will take that pledge. Okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> Why the hell is it Rick I mean, Adrian was all over looking at all those dark gifts, so I figured you would be. Well, that was under the, the compulsion from the staff cross. He was compelled. All right. So, yeah. Then, in that case, um, you you can easily follow the trail. Um, through the woods, if you wish. Um, okay. The terrain isn't particularly difficult, but um, there will be a little bit more chance of encounter. So uh, why don't we guys? Uh, if you're, are you going to start immediately, or are you going to spend yeah. the night? Or sure. yeah, let's we're, go. We're all healed up and everything. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so I'm wake a couple hours to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not very far. Um, so uh, go ahead and make a round of checks for overland travel. Ooh, that Lucky looks like 13. something. Lucky thirteen. Seventeen's the magic number. Yeah, he had oh, increased. Said we had 20. increased odds, and we got a seventeen and a twenty. I'm not feeling good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm only going to do one encounter here, so uh, let's see what it is. Um, uh, Tim, you got the higher roll, so why don't you go ahead and roll another d20 to see what happens? Twelve. Twelve. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Um, you guys are you you travel north through the forest and uh, you reach the Raven River, which is shallow enough for you to ford across without issue. Um. Oh. I, Rick Tavio or uh, Van Richten still has his tiger, doesn't he? Because one of you guys, he was, wasn't he wounded in combat and one of we you guys him, yeah. like stabilized yeah. him or something, healed him so he wouldn't die? Yep. Yep. So yeah, he's got his tiger with him. I keep forgetting that. Excuse me. So uh, you guys are traveling across this river and um, everyone make a perception check. All like seven of you now. Ooh. Do I get advantage? I rolled a six. <laughs> <coughs> Who was that first perception roll from? Oh, that was from Tim. Okay, that was part of his. Um, Where the hell is perception on here? Why am I blind? It's oh, under so, oh, there it is. It's under skill. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't looking under skill. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So you guys don't see whatever's there. And you don't hear whatever's there. And whatever is there doesn't do anything to you immediately. Oh. Well, there's some awful sporting of them. <laughs> um, so you guys uh, managed to make it to the road. And um, you. this is the Old Spalch Road going uh, east and west. You're probably right about here. Uh, you don't want to go to Kresg necessarily. Uh, the tracks actually pick up after some scrubbing around in the underbrush. You see that they resume in the forest on the other side of the road. <coughs> okay, we fell. Uh, the, okay, so the tracks actually do lead flanking the mountain. And no more rolls rolls are necessary here for whatever reason um if there's stuff out there and you do hear things moving around out in the woods every once in a while but uh whatever it is out there doesn't seem to be approaching you um so you guys after traveling for quite a distance the forest uh opens up and you see um this large hill over the uh, overlooking uh, Lake Baratok to the northwest of it. And the tracks proceed. They're harder to follow now. So I would say, uh, why don't you each... Um, actually, one person, pick one person to make a survival roll, and someone can aid them if they wish. Not me. I can aid or whatever, but... I suck at survival. I have a mine's, one. Mine's a four. I got a two. <laughs> so I have a zero. Dave, you roll, and All I right. will help. Good. Okay. There you go. So you get advantage, Dave. Oh. Um, okay. Well, either way, that would be good enough that you don't lose the trail. It's very, very faint, but you're still able to follow it enough um, without losing track of where it goes. Uh, so you're able to see that it is um, kind of running alongside this mountain. And... From, uh, let's see, are you guys being stealthy or are you, you're pretty much going to have to go half speed anyway. So if We're you're following tracks. A tiger, how stealthy are we? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Everyone would need to make stealth rolls, so. I'm always stealthy. <coughs> so I'd be going up front. Okay, well, if you're being stealthy, you're basically doing quarter movement, so you're really slow. Uh, well, but, for me, I'm as fast as the dwarf because I go 55. Yeah, but you're you're already half speed because you're f 
you know, trying to follow oh. these tracks. Oh. And if you're going stealth, then know. it's half of that. Yeah, we're not being any more stealthy than anyone walking through the woods. Okay. Um, well, you get probably about here or thereabouts based on you can see the lake now because this hill runs down and the lake is visible from where you're at uh but there's still like hill you know it's not like just one slope it's like hills and valleys and so forth so you um you you're kind of um keeping the hill on your left and you uh, a breast arise and you guys hear a somebody opened a six pack yeah (laughs) (laughs) Enjoy Coca-Cola. Hmm. Um, yeah, it sounded like someone is trying to get your attention okay. over the Dad over the. Over okay. You so... want Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go over the next hill and uh, you see a humanoid figure kind of crouch down, and uh, he looks somewhat familiar. Oh, really? Yep. And who are you? He is, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. (laughs) This guy, you've met him before. He was the guy that was um, a prisoner in Castle Raven. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, And he kind of disappeared when you got back to Velaki and all shit was breaking loose and... Mm -hmm. Um, there actually was a werewolf attack at that going on at that time. Right. Um, so he, fuck. yeah, he, uh, sees you guys. He motions you guys over and says, what are you ben, doing here? What's up? What are you doing here? Well, I, my wife has been taken prisoner by the werewolves. Hmm. And I, I haven't been able to get in. Uh, Let's... pack of no. pack of dire wolves passed through here not too long ago on its way back to their den. Well, right. I'm with us. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to save a child that has been abducted as well. Oh. <coughs> well, if you can help me rescue my wife, uh, I'll help you rescue this child. Perfect. So he uh, falls in rank with you guys. Uh, on the way, he's just, he he seems to know exactly where this uh, werewolf den is. Uh, he says that it's on the side of the mountain, or the side of this large hill. It's not really a mountain. Um, carved into the side, uh, there's a cave where these werewolves are make their den. Uh, he says he is not 100% sure how many are werewolves in there but he knows that there's at least a dozen werewolves um s- s- multiple dire wolves um like maybe nine wolves or so in there so there's a lot of creatures and he says that they probably are alert at this point the dire wolves have come back at speed which usually means that they're bringing tidings or something like that so i think they spotted us Seems They're ready. Possible, yes. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, you guys approach, and uh, you do spot uh, from probably a, you're probably about maybe uh, yeah, you say you're about a uh, hundred feet away or so, and uh, there's this. You see a torchlit cave, looking like the gaping maw of a great wolf on the side of Perfect. this uh, Rocky Mountain spur. Rocky Mountain spur. Ah, I'm within fireball range. How about that? <laughs> and I'm actually going to move you guys to another map. There's another big one. You're down at the bottom left. Oh, I got to get this damn tiger in there. A right, tiger in Africa. Wait, we're in Africa? There we are. 
Okay, I didn't have an armored tiger, so that's going to work. <laughs> um, so that's where you guys are, and he says that he knows there are at least two guards positioned right inside the entrance to this cave that are on watch at all times, and he says there's also an overlook above the encampment where there might be some guards on watch that can probably see quite a distance, which is why he's been having you kind of hug this ridge. How come you didn't take him out from a distance? He doesn't have any weapons on him. Oh, that explains it. But it does look like um, you might be able to climb up there. Can I teleport up there? Uh, let's see, it's about 100 feet up. 100 feet above the cave mouth. climb the wall. Oh, that's right, I forgot. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you would... Um, in fact, you could... Um, Before since... I leave, I hand the, the new guy uh, a silvered short sword. Oh. Okay. He looks it over and says, thank you. I can use this to defend myself, actually, and maybe actually help. Maybe that would be useful. <laughs> you <should laughs> what is that. your What is your plan? Uh, kill stuff. If it moves, yeah. we kill it. <laughs> are Except you, the baby. <laughs> are you just going to go in charging, or we're we're not good at planning? <laughs> well, every time we do plan, it kind of goes to shit anyway. <laughs> I could go up and see what the guards are doing. Yeah, I say we kind of move a little closer, maybe, and I say we come up here and look around the corner. The um, well, I say we kind of move up here and then let him <clears> check <throat> out right. the guards and the slope. The slope uh, would be scalable without need for climber's kit or ability checks for everybody. Oh, oh! I'll actually give him my javelin so he has a ranged weapon too, if he wants it. So I guess I can move like 110 feet and around. It's up to you guys where you want me to go or scout. I mean, I say we just kind of move up to here somewhere and then just okay. scale the wall up, up to the overlook. All right. I, I can go up to the overlook first if you want. You can lead the way, but we'll be behind you. Okay. How but far then, I mean, apart are you going to stay between each other? Well, so I have a movement speed of 30, and he's got a movement speed of 55, so roughly 25 feet behind him I'll be. <laughs> so you're going to be doing full movement. Okay, so you're going to try and stay 25 feet behind him? I, yeah, I think we should just do our normal movement speed, and that'll kind of in, inherently put him ahead of us a little bit. Yeah, well, the gap would... Yeah. Okay, so... If, by the time he gets up, it depends up the, on how many moves we have to make to get up there. It would take him two two rounds of movement essentially to get okay. up there. Uh, the rest of you guys would take about three or so. Okay, sure. so we'd be one round of movement behind him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Adrian, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to move you to the upper left corner of the map where this lookout point is. I need to reveal okay. it first. And then as I get closer, I will try to be a little stealthy. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and make a stealth check while I move you. Got a plus nine. I should do okay, right? There we go. Okay. Nice. Ow. <laughs> wow. And they actually, they rolled pretty well. Um, but they still did not see you. And this is retarded because you're going to see this secret door here, but we'll just say that he said, okay, Emil told you he saw people going in and out of the rock wall behind there, so there should be a secret door there. <laughs> uh, so you will say you uh, are right here, and um, I will move the rest of the party get everyone clustered together here. Uh, you 
you're climbing the slope behind. So you will be there. Everyone else will be there in a round or so. But um, so everyone else, excuse me. Everyone else is right now in the black area, so you can't see yourself. But mm -hmm. right now, Adrian's in the upper right-hand corner. And you've been stealthy enough. You see uh, two guards who are actually in human form right now. Um, they do have not spotted you. And I guess, uh, why don't I go ahead and let's just go ahead and... So would Adrian have any reason to believe they're uh, werewolves, except that we've been told this is a werewolf den? Um, I mean, they they, they are like kind of hairy, right? kind of they are kind of hairy looking. Okay. But uh, yeah, you don't, they don't like have any features that are immediately okay. apparent. Werewolves when they're in human form don't you can't necessarily tell. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's kind of what I was asking. But... Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to pass off as werewolves very well. <laughs> Good rolls. Wow. Hang on, I haven't rolled yet. It'll probably be horrible. Yeah. Uh, All of yeah. us are over 10. That's not terrible. That's above oh, average. Geez, now i got to roll everyone here. Thanks for all the NPCs, guys. Please. Let's add some more. <laughs> I want to add more before we go fight the Strahd. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. And I'm just going to have the tiger go on Rictavia's turn. Speaking of which, I have to go find a stat block here for that. Give me a second. Tiger. So, um, for this first round, uh, Adrian, you are the oh, and these werewolves I gotta add too. What yeah, is your plan, Adrian? So, well, I know they're only around behind, and I'm guessing that they're gonna be really freaking loud. Um, you know us well. I think I want to get a full round of a surprise attack on this dude here. Okay. If possible. Uh, okay, so yeah, the, the, basically where you're at is the start of your round, so they basically didn't perceive you, so you get, it's just you get actions this round. Okay. So then I will move pretty sure that's I'm just going to ring like, based on speed. I got more than enough to get here. I want to block. If somebody tries to get in past this, I want to get him. But anyway, I want to whack him. Okay. Yeah, their AC in humanized form is fairly low, so uh, all of those hit. <laughs> Forty-four, thirty-four, forty-three. Forty-three. Okay, all magical or silver damage. Yep. If radiant matters, wow. it's radiant damage for the sunlight. Yeah, it doesn't make any yep. difference. Okay. But that uh, forty-three, you said. Yep. That yeah, he he's badly wounded. <laughs> uh, he totally was not expecting that, but uh, he is not knocked down and unconscious as of yet. So that was the surprise round. So we're going to just cycle through to the top and the top of the order. Um, Werewolf sees you and lets out a howl. Arr! And uh, transforms into werewolf form. And I think he's going to go... 
he's gonna go he's gonna go hybrid form so he charges over and moves to attack Adrin. Gets two attacks, one bite and one claw. Oh, natural 20 on the bite. Oh. All right, so this would be... Adrian's got this. We can move on. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Uh, five points of piercing damage, and you need to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> ah! no. and you're now a werewolf. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens out of that. Uh, claws. 13 probably is nowhere near enough to hit you, I'm sure. Okay, so that was the werewolf. Jugs is up. Is where I'm located kind of where we were walking up? That... Yeah, I just put you guys where okay. you probably would wind up being. So, so I can kind of end up there. Okay. And... I'm going to cast Fireball. Fireball? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm assuming just encompassing Adrin and the werewolves? Yeah. Okay. So deck saves for them. What's the DC they need? Uh, 16. Okay. You failed, and he failed. Both werewolves failed. 32 points total. Okay, the one you hit before, Adrian, is burned to a crisp, dead. Uh, nice. The other one is badly wounded. Okay, and that's Jugs. Adrian's up. It's 26 kill. 26 points of damage on the werewolf is exactly what you needed to kill him, actually. <laughs> nice. Uh, he drops as well. I'm just going to turn back and yell to them, don't worry, we got it. Uh, okay, so let me just see what's going on here now. Um, -bum 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 -bum. Mm. I go, dudes, I got a, a werewolf puncture. Right, right oh, there. This is going to be a huge, huge pain uh, in the ass. If you make me do this, I... I, uh, I have greater we're restoration. Not, we're not making you do anything. No, yeah, you, you know, but you want that. individual initiative on everybody. Well, how much uh, you, can you group them by two? I could, two but... Two, the, blue. Or you could group them by like three or four, even. Whatever. I can't group them manually at all or automatically at all. And I have to like create stand ins for certain groups. Oh. It's all or nothing. It's either all them, all the, all of them go. Well, for now, you can't see them. So I'm just going to have them all go on Werewolf Four's initiative point. Yeah. yeah. How about they all go on the same initiative point until they come into our vision and then you add them? Yeah. That's, I'll just leave uh, Werewolf Four in the initiative point for now to represent him because this is nuts otherwise uh, okay let me see these guys will go here these guys here. I'm ready go over there these guys will go here guy will go there that guy will go there and that guy will go here okay um all right so emil uh he 5 10 15 20 he double dashes to there rowan's up um so there are there are no foes at this point None visible. Can, okay. 
I'll just uh, stay where I'm at for now. Uh, no, I'll move up over here. Okay. Clay and then I'm done. Is this just like a landing with no roof to it or anything that we're on? Yeah, it's like a okay. cave. We seem, to, we seem to have lost him. Who's there? Oh, it's your turn. Yeah, but he's frozen. Oh, he's not? frozen? He's not on our screen. Not for me. Oh, uh, he's frozen on mine. Oh, yeah, no, I can see him. Oh, I just heard a little bit. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I've can got you hear him, Paul? Yeah, he looks good on mine. I, see, I cannot hear him. I see a little thing like a oh, sound he's wave. He's talking to us. We can hear him. We can see him. No, I cannot see him. Everybody looks good to me. Oh. Huh. Do you want him to drop off and rejoin? Yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Of course, that's going to mess everyone's window up, but oh well. That's VC for you. Yep, and here we go. How's that? Any better? Oh, yeah, much better. Okay. Can that anyone else weird. hear him? I could hear yeah. and see everyone else. I could, just I could hear more. Yeah, everything was fine except your two connections to each Wait. other. <laughs> can you hear him now is my point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you can hear me, Paul? Yep. Okay, then I will double move up here. Okay. That's I'm trying to get everyone's right chat now. window fixed. Because, <coughs> of course, VC messed it up. I messed... Hang on. Okay. All right, we got it. Good enough. Uh, Rectavio and Casimir will move up along with the tiger. I say they get to about there. So, so all right. So in the scheme of things, uh, there's more movement and. Okay, so we get emerging out of that hole or that secret door, this slides aside, and we get a bunch more werewolves coming out. Fireballs, 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 fireballs. And they had to move, so dash basically, so they can't attack this round, but they're out now. Uh, Jugs is up. All right. Um, five, ten. If I stand here, uh, well, do I want to hit him with a lightning bolt or a fireball? That's a question. Would lightning bolt hit all of these? Well, that's what I was going to ask, but I think I might just hit him with a fireball. <laughs> Stay where I was. Yeah, I'm going to just hit him with a fireball. Okay, more deck saves. Oh my god. What a terrible roll. I had to roll it as a higher level, so... It's 29 whoop-de-doo damage. Well, all of them failed their saves, so they all take the full amount of damage. Uh, 20... Back. 29 points. And you just passed your save, Paul. <laughs> it's, it still counts, though. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Same as a 26. And I'm just going to stay where I was at. Okay. No reason to move anywhere right now. Yeah, the direwolf is very badly burned. The other two werewolves, not so much. They're already in hybrid form, by the way. Oh, Adrin, make a perception check. Ooh. Very nice roll. Um, you see one of the werewolves coming out. 
okay. spot Emil and do a double take. Hmm. So they recognize him. Dun, dun, dun. And it's your turn, actually. That's what I was kind of wondering. Right, if you were saying, Dude, they recognized Emil. I don't know if that's a big deal or not. Punch, punch, punch. <laughs> <laughs> punch, punch, punch. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to take a, I'm going to step forward and I'm going to say F it, right? And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hit the wolf. Uh, sorry, the dire wolf. Nice. And see if it kills him. Uh, that would be enough to hit him. And 10 points is enough to kill him. All right. So, so the dire wolf goes we'll, down. We'll move on to a werewolf. Ooh. Ooh. Is that enough? Um, yes. Sweet. Which one were you hitting? Uh, hang on. Uh, that one. Okay. And then I will go ahead and spend a key point, attack with two fists. Critical. Oh, Holy critical! Crap. Double critical. Oh, oh, my God. oh, my God. <laughs> you just rolled 420s. Right. Yeah, wow. that's... Yes, I love this. I love this dice rolling. What just happened? All right, so eleven, and this is the first crit. If it kills this one, I gotta move on. I wanna move on to the next one. So that is twenty-seven to that werewolf. Okay, that. Okay, I will. Uh, no, I'm not gonna give you anything special. That was roll twenty. I, I, I am not convinced that that was not something screwed up on roll twenty. Sorry, four crits in a row. Yeah, that's a little nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you still had uh, the was that fourteen sunblade a miss or a hit? The fourteen was a hit. hit. He said, "Yeah, okay, that was what killed the direwolf." Oh, okay. that's the eleven at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So it was twenty-seven. Did that kill it? Not quite. Okay, so then the next one would have been sixteen more. Okay, that kills it. All right. Let's, I'm gonna roll another one to see if I hit another twenty. <laughs> Just about. Yeah. 19. Jeez. 19. Jeez. I, love, I love this dice roller. Yeah. You should it, have saved that 19. And it, ro- <laughs> and it loves you, apparently. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. What's going on in here? These guys are moving up. Here. Do they get two turns? There's two werewolves on there. I'm... It's a different group. I'm using groups right now. Oh, you're using, you are using groups. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were just going to do it as one. No, I just, it's, it's yeah, there's no way I'm going to have all the individual creatures on here. Yeah. That's why I thought you were just going to do it as one group. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm equipment. breaking it into two separate groups. Um, no, they wouldn't just stay there. Hang on. I just got to, I have to mark this guy somehow. So I don't forget who the hell he is. Just cowering after hearing those screams. That's what... um, yeah, you guys actually hear the baying of wolves, and you see a bunch of werewolves and wolves running up the hill oh, behind God. you, basically from below. All right. We started it. And I'm going to just go we ahead did. and reveal them, because that's kind of, we'll just say that's where they are in relation to the party. Nice. And they'll be, that's werewolf four group down there. The other one's werewolf sick. Uh, Emil uh, turns and sees them coming. And all right, he actually is going to head forward and attack 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. All right, he can move up there, but he can't attack. He dashes up to that spot. <laughs> uh, Rowan is up. All right, how, how big is that, uh, like a fireball again? I believe that's a 20-foot radius, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it should it say in the spell description. Spear. All right, where do I? All right. 
I'm just going to put myself... I'm not moving down here, but this is where I want the fireball placed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. That's right. I'm still standing next to Clytus. Okay. I gotcha. Um, so let's see. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six dire wolves. Okay. All right. Sorry. Werewolves. Um, all right. So, and what's your save DC? 16. Okay. So what's the damage? I got to roll it yet. Uh. Do it at a higher level. What the hell? Okay. 19? Looks like plus 8 for a higher. You did it at a oh, higher level. Yeah. You did the higher levels. Yeah, okay. 27. 27. 27. Nice. Yep. Okay, so he made his save. So, 15. Uh, oh, not quite enough. He made. Failed to save. Failed. Failed. Number one definitely fails. Ooh, and this is like an older werewolf. He's kind of hobbling along, and it really damaged him badly. He's still up, and he's like, oh! My angina. Okay. Um, all right. Say my vagina. No, my yeah. angina. Angina. Oh. Angina. <laughs> uh, Clytus is up. All right. <clears throat> I think he needs new headphones. Who? Uh, all right. I'm going to... I'm going to cast Bless on Jugs, Rowan, and Casimir. So you guys get a D4 that you can add to your either attacks or saving throws nice. for the next minute. Okay. And then I move here. Alrighty. Uh, so for 10 rounds. All right. Rectavio, uh, let's see. He doesn't like this group coming from behind which one of these is Rictavio there we go <clears throat> Rictavio yeah he still doesn't have a ranged weapon, though. Uh, give me a second to look this up quick. Oh, that won't do any good. He will instead... I guess he'll just move forward to attack to engage the... Oh, that'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. All right, so he moves up. He brandishes his sword cane, and the tiger is going to do an about face, and he can move faster than Rictavio. He's got a 40-foot movement, so uh, he dashes up there. Uh, again, he can't pounce. You know what? He's going to hold back a little bit and pounce. So he can pounce. <laughs> he's going to kind of trot up, and in his next round, he's going to move up and attack. All right. Another NPC. What does Casimir do? Uh, yeah, he thinks Rictavio's right in the way of his cone of cold. So instead, he'll join the club and cast a fireball. Uh, encompassing the same wolves, basically, that nice. he did. And let's see. Just roll through all these guys now. Give me a second. I 
can't believe I'm fighting a battle with this many NPCs. You haven't seen everyone yet. <laughs> have to bring them all. <laughs> yeah, you could just say we win. Right. All right so. Yeah, sure. I like that. That's okay, fine. Okay, so that guy actually saved again. That guy actually failed again. Oh. He's wearing him out. He failed again. He failed. Nice. He made it. They gotta be toast or close to it. Oh, the old guy failed. Alright, the old werewolf died. <laughs> <laughs> so much for Skennis. Named NPC werewolf. Okay, so that was Casimir. Um, okay, now these werewolves uh, up on top get to go. Um, all right, so first off, hmm, that's not going to work. Hang on, got to look up something. What's the equivalent of a bull rush in 5th edition? Oh, boy. Was, uh... Shoving. Here we go. Attack to take a special melee attack to shove a creature either to knock it prone or push it away from you. Uh, if you make multiple attacks, the attack on you. Okay, so it's strength athletics contested by strength athletics or dexterity. And let's see, what is Emil's? This uh, werewolf is going to try and push Emil backwards. Um, actually, yeah. too many combatants. All right, so strength doesn't look like they have athletics. Oh, he got a 19, a meal. <laughs> Shit, got a five. Okay, so <laughs> uh, werewolf pushes Emil backwards five feet away. And that was his attack, essentially. That was his action for the round, so he can't make another attack. Uh, this werewolf is going to circle around here and attack Adrin, first with a bite, which misses, second with a claw, which also Isn't misses. Isn't he flanking? Not that I want you to kill Adrin. But... Good point. Yeah, I forget. we are using flanking rolls, aren't we? <laughs> uh, so his uh, advantaged attack was a 19. Does that hit you, Adrin? Yep. Okay. Yes. So uh, you actually are bitten again for another five points damage. Better to save again, I already failed. Yes, uh, you already failed, so no need to make another save. Uh, the claw attack, advantage attack, was an 18. Does that hit? Nope. Of course. Okay. And the claw attack does nine points of damage. And stepping out of the secret area door thing, uh, emerge two more combatants. Now well, this guy actually is going to have to squeeze, but he can squeeze past you and wind up there. That's a dire wolf. And this big, really nasty looking werewolf guy in hybrid form who uh, Emil recognizes as their leader. Uh, so he, okay, I guess first let me take the dire wolf. He's going after Adrin. And he gets advantage because, 
of pack tactics. He is going to bite. Oh yeah, uh, 24. Holy shit. Um, so the direwolf bites you. You take four points of damage. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, seven points of damage, piercing damage. And you need to make a strength saving throw. Which you've made. So you are not knocked prone. And the leader guy, let's just for argument call him Kirill, uh, he is going to multi-attack you as well. What a random name. Where'd you come up with it? Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? Uh, both the bite and the claws missed. He is not flanking with anyone, so. Okay, that's them. Jugs is up. Uh... You know, Adrian, Adrian, uh, <laughs> Adrian, and Clytus, you want to be T Rexes? Uh, will will <laughs> that actually that. help us? Uh, well, it gets us temporary hit points. Yeah, you get the T Rex hit points, and if you right. get knocked down to zero, you turn back into yourself. So yeah, but we won't get magical or silver attacks anymore. This one is different. No, but the T Rex hits pretty damn hard. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm not get... sure what the hell. I'm going to use polymorph on both of them. Okay. Oh, this is always fun. So we're going to have two T Rexes on the field, currently. <laughs> oh, crazy. Okay, so we'll say. Uh, what size are these guys again now? Uh, they're huge. Yeah, let's just say that's... I'll be back. All right, so... This is so cumbersome. <laughs> I just made your life more difficult. I'm sorry. You didn't make it easier. <laughs> Okay, so Adrian, oh Jesus, and it just <laughs> covers everything up. That's the problem. I, I know. Okay. Oh, um, so I'm oh, sorry, Adrian. You can just make me a 15 foot circle if you want. Yeah, I know, but that's not as fun. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look as cool. <laughs> Okay. All right, Adrian, you're that T-Rex. How many hit points do you have? Do you happen to have that? Oh. I can look. I can do T-Rex. Yeah, we can okay. pull it up in the compendium. It's controller controllable by you. And we'll say, so you're doing Jugs is the other one? I'm sorry, uh, Clytus is the other Clytus, one? Clytus, yeah. Uh, in the compendium, they have 136 hit points. Wow. These two big ass T Rexes appear. <laughs> and... I'm glad they're different colors. That's even better. Well, uh, yeah, as I was trying to find, make sure I had found two of them. And let me make that controllable by Tim here. There you go, Tim. You have. Control over Clytus T Rex. Clytrex. 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 Adrex and Clytrex. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jugs, that was your turn. If you wish to move, you can. Uh, I mean, maybe I'll back five feet away from this giant T Rex. <laughs> you don't want to get stepped on? Yeah. Okay. Adren Rex, it's your turn. This would be the bite. Um, who am I going to hit? Uh, who do I want to hit here? I think I'm going to hit the dire wolf and hopefully I'll just kill him. Okay. Right away, I hope. So 26 to hit. Uh, yes, that definitely hits. 
This would be 4d12 plus 7. 55. 55? 35. Clinus, I know you were worried about not having your weapons, but I think you'll be fine. 35 on the dire wolf. Okay, uh, this one looks a little tougher than the other one that you saw. Um, right. He's still up. I will, I will tail swipe him. Uh, that is also a plus 10. Mm -hmm. 27 to hit. Yep. And this would be 3d8 plus 7. Twenty-three more points. <laughs> he is barely up. This T Rex basically just took a big chomp out of him and whacked him against the wall. So this thing's like staggering on like two paws and it is still up. Um, so, no, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? No, so how many hit points are gonna stare me right in the face? I can see it. I'm good. All right, hang on, my headphones are now deciding to. Came out of the little plug. Okay, that doesn't help. All right, uh, so the next group of werewolves will go, uh, and wolves. So, yeah, we've got some really <coughs> weakened werewolves, but they're all going to gang up on Rectavio. Yikes. All right, so let's see here. This, this. Ouch. Hit. So one bite succeeds. Uh, you see Victavio look very worried. Um, Yikes, another bite succeeds. <laughs> and last one. Okay, so that was all the attacks of all those werewolves against Rectavio, and two bites succeeded. Um, this is kind of a save. I rolled his saves already. No. Uh, okay, Emil. Um, he um, uses the silvered short sword that you gave him against Ooh. the werewolf in front of him. And. Hits! That wasn't a magical short sword, was it? It was just. It's just silver. It's just silver, okay. So. Does some damage. Okay. Not enough to knock him down, though. Rowan is up. All right, going in. Uh... I should do something with that guy, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a, another fireball. Centered on. Uh... Like right there. Where? I can't see it. Down by those wolves. Those red. Oh, wolves. okay. All right. So all the wolves. So, yeah. So it'll get all of those. Okay. So. Wolves. Oh, I forgot to move them forward. They actually went on the other wolves. So they would have oh, been. Oh, okay. But it's okay. They would have been basically up about there. Oh. So you're able to well, focus. I'll, I'll center it so I get these. These three as well. Okay. You know? Yeah, that should be enough to include them all, pretty much. Alright. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. Nice. So, 34? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Dead. 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 Wow, a lot of ones. Dead. 
Uh, he made it, but didn't have enough hit points anyway, so he's dead. Actually, they're all dead. Doesn't matter if they save. <laughs> uh, these werewolves. Uh, he's dead because it doesn't matter if he saved. Didn't have enough hit points. Uh, he actually might make a difference. Uh, yeah, he is still up, but he took a beating. Uh, the last one didn't have enough hit points to survive no matter what, so he's dead too. Nice. So we killed uh, all the wolves and two more of the werewolves. Woo! Very potent fireball. Clytus is up. Yay. Or Clyte, uh, Clytex. All right, so. Okay, so I come down here, and I'm going to bite... I'll bite this one, the one on the left first. Okay. Ooh, natural 20. Nice, that's a crit. And the bite is 4d12 plus 7. So 8d12 plus 7. <laughs> Are you really worried about not having your non-magic weapon? 8d12. <laughs> I uh, just was, you know, these guys are... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so it's basically the scene at a Jurassic Park. I just comes stomping on, boom, 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 picks up the werewolf in his mouth, and it's like, rah, 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 and throws half of him one way and half of him the other way. <laughs> werewolf right. guts everywhere. And then I'm going to tail sweep the one oh. on the other side. <laughs> that was the wrong. To See, I can't select. All I can select is Clytus. That's okay. I was going to. That's all right. I was just going to move you to the bottom. Here, hang on. Uh. To back. That's what I wanted. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to hit that one. Okay. 17 hit. Uh, yep. All right. And that is 3d8 plus 7. Not as, not as scary. Why is it? 27 is enough to kill it. Nice. So that werewolf's dead. Yay. Wow. T Rex. Two T Rexes <laughs> on a rampage on the side of this mountain. <laughs> uh, okay. Rictavio is like, whoa. <laughs> uh, he shouts to the tiger, don't attack the dinosaurs. <laughs> and friend, friend. <laughs> The big guy is your friend. <laughs> um, yeah, he swings at the uh, were surviving werewolf in front of him with his uh, say, uh, sword cane, but misses. The tiger, on the other hand, is going to run up and pounce on the surviving werewolf. Probably barely. <laughs> Uh, actually, so yeah, it would be a claw attack. Nice, not a non-natural twenty definitely hits. Holy shit, max damage. Uh, and okay, actually, it didn't even need to worry about knocking it prone because it killed it. <laughs> it just nice. jumped up, pounced on him, and started mauling him and ripping him apart. Oh. <laughs> Adrian bites the werewolf. Bit the same one that bit him. How do you like it? <laughs> Casimir. Oh, what the hell can he do here? Uh, well, all the opponents except for the main guys up there are taken care of. So his area effect spell probably would not be a good way to go. Uh, he will magic missile. Uh, shit, hang on. I'm looking to see what level he can cast that at. Oh, for frack's sake, come on. Thanks, Serpa. Ah, uh, well, he's just going to cast it at regular level. Doesn't really pay to... 
three. So nine points. Uh, he's going after the leader guy. Oops. Uh, hang on, I gotta move you to the back here too. So I can select the guys underneath you. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, werewolf guys up on front. So, uh, well, first we've got, okay, first I'm gonna do the dire wolf. Uh, it's gonna attack Adrin in T-Rex form. Ad Adrex. Adrex. Uh, 13 is the AC. Okay, so definitely 21 hits. Um, Uh, five points of damage, and I'm not going to have you make a strength check because there's just no way a dire wolf is bringing down a T-Rex. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care what his ability is. So some things just don't make sense. Uh, Kirill is going to multi-attack on you. Uh, holy crap, he rolled a one and a two. Wow. <laughs> what a leader, I tell you. Uh, the werewolf on Emil is also going to multi-attack on him. Uh, and miss both times. Jugs is up. All right. Uh, I will move to like here. Okay. And shoot a firebolt at the dire wolf. Hits. Kills. Nine damage. All right. Uh, this firebolt took him out. He really was pretty wounded. Okay. And the uh, Kirill shouts, "No, my puppy!" <laughs> <laughs> you killed my puppy bite me I will <laughs> <laughs> is that it yep alright Adrex Adrex will attack with a bite on the leader dude okay Roll 17 that's enough to hit so this would be this he is um, medium or yes. smaller, right? Yes. He is now grappled Ooh. and restrained. <laughs> um, escape DC is 17. Uh, and then my tail swipe, I will do that werewolf there. Okay. Okay. And that was the D20 plus 10. 22, I guess that hits. Yep. That's the damage. Oh, wow. Yeah, you badly wounded that werewolf. It's still standing, but not dead yet. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone else coming up here? Uh... It's like a werewolf and uh, that Emil guy. That's a different werewolf group. Oh, okay. Is that the one I took out? No, this is the yeah, all the ones that were down below and Yeah, okay. That's I not like th dueling T Rexes. <laughs> <laughs> uh Emil is going to attack again with the short sword. Uh oh, he actually hits with it. Uh so another points. Yeah, the silver actually is helping. Uh Rowan is up. All right, I'm going to target that dude. And I'm going to do my Scorching Ray. Okay. So do I get that plus four to hit if I need it? Yes. Okay. Oh, I forgot Don't that totally. Need it there. Uh, it definitely hits. Uh, would uh, let me roll. Well, he actually had one. He, he What was the damage? He may have uh, been killed by the first one. Yeah, so the first Scorching Ray kills okay. him. Okay, so I'll target this other one then. Or is okay. T-Rex in the way? Uh, no. No, okay. they don't really, he isn't really providing cover. So, uh, 14? For the second one? What, 14? He gets an extra D4 for the blast. Oh, I see. I got you. That was what the... Okay. Uh, 14 is... Yes, that will hit. Okay. There he uh, sees fairly the low. second one. So 10 points there. 
Okay, he's still up. All right, and then I got my last one here. Same target? Nice. Yeah. Yep. And that killed him. Nice. Boom, boom, I've boom. Done, I've done some damage. This yeah, yeah, you all have. <laughs> yeah, it's been a good combat. Clytrex. What do I see left? Uh, well, really, the only one standing up here is the leader, <laughs> and you really can't get to him because uh, Adrex that, is in the way. That guy Unless we do right. a little T Rex tug of war, right? <laughs> <laughs> he is actually he is restrained in his pretty much in his right. mouth. Yeah, I'm gonna try to bite him in half. Okay. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing saying you can't attack. I would say that you have t ten foot reach, I believe, with this T Rex. So fifty foot. Yeah. Okay. So you can kind of reach your head in there. And... Oh, no, no, ten foot reach. Here. Uh. All right. That's something a T Rex would do too. Yeah. <laughs> these two T Rexes. Give me my food. Yeah. Fighting over a meal. I assume that hits. Uh. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Forty twelve plus seven. There's a, a re-roll, last 10 rolls, so you can do that re-roll, by the way. Yeah. Uh, 29 points. Okay. He, oh, wow. Amazingly, he is still up. He is still restrained. Wow. He had a lot of hit points. I, I, I can't really tail swipe him, can I? Yeah. Uh, no, he's in Adrian's mouth. So. Right. <laughs> Adrex is, he's in Adrex's mouth. Uh, yeah, Rick Tavio is... So well, technically, I, technically, I grapple him as well, so he's double grappled. <laughs> right. yeah. um, I'm not going to let that really fly. He's already he's already uh, grappled. He's, it's like being advantage or disadvantage. He's either grappled or he's not. Right. He's too small of a morsel to do that with. <laughs> Um, yeah, Rick, so Rictavio, he's going to heal himself because he got wounded. Casimir, uh, he's just like, he's going to chill and let you guys finish him off. Uh, he, okay, so now he is grappled. Now, to escape this, he, I'm assuming he can try a dex acrobatics. Uh, escape DC is 17. Okay. So it's strength or... Failed miserably. There you um, go. So, and that's, yeah, he's screwed, basically. <laughs> Jugs is up. Um, yeah, Firebolt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I'll you use get a my, plus uh... D4. What? I gave you the D4 as well. Oh, shoot. Well, I'm going to use my uh, Wild Magic Surge anyway. Give myself nice. advantage. Okay. Um, you actually would have hit him with 11, but I'm going to take the wild magic search. <laughs> Go ahead and roll percentile. Nice. Well, it's got to be on a spell. So the next time I cast a, a spell, that's a cantrip. Oh, that's a cantrip. That's right. Cantrip. It's a so it's the next time I cast next a spell Next time you cantrip. Now. <laughs> uh, but you definitely hit him. So he takes 10 points of fire damage. He is still up. Uh, he, yeah, he's like, uh, what's his name? Quint in oh. Jaws. He's like blood's coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Uh, Adrex though is about ready to have himself a light snack. <laughs> yeah. Forty-two. Forty-two points of damage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He had nine left. <laughs> chomp, chomp, chomp. Hairy bits of flesh go flying everywhere. And... Okay. Just for fun, I'm a T-Rex. I'm gonna swallow the motherfucker. Okay. Right. <laughs> you swallow him. Like what happens when you turn it's back? That's what I want to find out, right? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm especially curious to what oh. happens because of the failed save earlier. Oh, I couldn't eat another bite. <laughs> <laughs> it's way for thin. Okay, um, so... What are you guys going to do next? We're going to wait for more werewolves to show up. Okay. Uh, well, right. explore the caves. Wolves. Look for the, look for the baby. <coughs> how I'm long does ask... your polymorph last? Uh, an hour. Yeah, I think it lasts an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
up to an hour. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's it. let's not waste this. Let's do want to stumble on down the hill and then enter in the front. Yeah, sure. Let's do yeah, it. let's do it. Okay. Right. I guess what I wanted to quick thing. ask this uh, guy that's with us if he why they recognized well, him. Uh, actually, oh, before that, like before that, uh, he oh. actually um, runs in to the door through the door immediately. Uh, yelling a woman's oh. name, oh, or what you assume to be a woman's name. That's okay. All right, let's stumble down the hill. Can I lay on my side and roll down the hill? Like, Ooh, who wants to ride on my back? I do. There you go. I want the T Rexes to roll down the hill. <laughs> It'd be like one of those, you know, those people dressed up in those T Rex outfits, and you see them like jumping off yeah. of piers and stuff. I can just see them rolling down the side of this hill. Just like that commercial with the puppies rolling down the hill, but yeah. not quite as graceful. Um, right. Actually, does this ledge continue over here? Um, it's no, it's it's basically a hill going oh, up to the okay. ledge area. So there's not really. All right. <laughs> well, I, it probably does for a little ways, but not much. And I and I roar all the way down. Okay. <laughs> roar, thud, 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 thud roar. <laughs> Okay, I'm moving everyone down here to the bottom. Okay. Um, you know what? At this point, I don't want to belabor combat because it's getting close to 9 o'clock. Uh, there are basically five werewolves and a dire wolf left. And Aww. so you kill them all. Um, I'm just going to reveal the whole map and say you took care of it just because this... <coughs> I don't know how much fun this would be. Yeah, we've been that was fun today. It, it was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> it was. But it's there's no way these guys are going to survive. Um, against two T Rexes. Yeah, against the two. Last of us. <laughs> if I could say get in my belly, I'd do that, but I can't. All right. So uh, this is the map. Um, okay. <coughs> there were. I'm just going to get rid of these guys here. You know what? Actually, I'm not gonna say you waste them. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm actually turn back the clock. Turn back the clock. Um, you basically head into this uh, cave complex, which is the uh, den area of the um, of the werewolf clan, and there are five werewolves left. And you come in and. This is what you you actually get to this chamber uh, in the upper right hand corner. Okay. And I'm gonna read you a description of it actually. Um. You first you see all the werewolves standing off to the side, not attacking Emil. Um. And the room itself, uh, rough-hewn stairs lead down to a torchlit cave and a bizarre sight. Wide-eyed children <coughs> stand behind wooden bars and stare at you in terrified silence. The cave holds six wooden cages, their lids held shut with heavy rocks. Two of the cages are empty, and each of the others holds a pair of frightened children. A crude wooden statue stands between the cages. It bears a rough likeness of a wolf-headed woman draped in garlands of vines and night flowers. Piled around the statue's base is an incredible amount of treasure. A woman in shredded clothes kneels before the statue. Behind the statue, two maggot-ridden corpses hang from iron shackles bolted to the wall. So, yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and move yourselves up to where you are, the... Uh, the dire wolf, um, as the T-Rexes advance, it growls but does not attack. Um, and standing here is Emil, and he is standing protectively next to uh, another woman, the woman who is kneeling in front of the statue. Hello. Emil, is that your wife? He says, yes, indeed. This is Zulka. I'm oh, sorry, Zulika. I think I pronounced her name. Why are we not killing these werewolves? 
Because they have surrendered. They have yielded control of the tribe to myself and my wife. Why would they do that? Because we have defeated Kiro and his long reign of terror is over. So are you go- are you a good werewolf or a bad werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zekila says, we like to think of ourselves as good werewolves. At least... Then Better can we than... return these children to their families? Um, Emil says, absolutely not. And Zukil, uh, Zukilis kind of looks at him and looks at the two T-Rexes standing there and says, Emil, perhaps <laughs> we should cut our losses here. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up and I... I'm going to say you might want to rethink that answer. Screw that. He's, he said no. He means to say, he said, do it again. Fuck that. I'm going to walk up and eat that <laughs> werewolf right there. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Bastard! Are you, you're gonna atta- other... you're gonna attack the werewolf. While he's attacking the werewolf, I'm gonna say you might want to rethink that answer. I'm gonna okay. attack the big dire wolf. Okay, you're actually so you're actually gonna attack. Yes. He's, okay. He said no, so that means he's gonna do it again. Okay, so as soon as we leave, they'll go kidnap them all again. All right, we're back in initiative. I'm not changing initiative order. That's where we're at. Right. Adrian, go ahead and make a roll. All right. <laughs> Yeah. I grapple and have one in my mouth, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Well, how much damage did you do? 29. Okay, yeah, it's still up. And I'm going to use my tail to... Well, actually, I can move 50 feet. <laughs> um, and for fun, I don't care who hits me. I'm going to tail whack his bride. Oh, nice. The one who was advocating for peace? Yeah. That's what I'm what? Thinking. Okay. What are we doing? Okay, go ahead and attack. What has happened? They're werewolves. T Rex Adrin's on a mission here. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm sorry. What was the attack roll? Uh, 28. Uh, definitely hits. 22 in damage. <coughs> okay, yeah, then any hint at possible compromise has gone out the window now. Yep. Okay. Um, werewolves. I'm just going to have them all go on werewolf four, except for Emil. Uh, uh, the werewolves dogpile well, the T-Rex. He's on the same number anyway. He's next, so. <laughs> he got a 14 as well, so. All right. So all the werewolves will Swirl actually. The T-Rex. Yeah, so, um... AC of 13. Okay, okay. Oh! Hit. Okay. Total of 29 points of damage from five hits. And, uh, oh, Emil is, as soon as he knocked down his wife, uh, he just shrieks in fury, and uh, he changes full wolf form. Uh, And... Yeah, he'll... He charges you. Okay. You sure he's not going to, like... Beat his wife for. Okay, so he is. Covering. I have a ten foot reach. Can I get a? Uh, and he's moving into my threatened area. That's a. That's not five e. You only get an attack of opportunity when someone leaves you. Threatened. Oh, someone leaves. Okay. Uh, so he will attack you. Uh, first of all. Uh, no, he's actually he's going to be hybrid. Uh. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, no. His silver weapon wouldn't do any good against you. The one you gave him, <laughs> yeah. it's not magical, so it it's no big. Deal. He'll just he'll he'll be full wolf form. Uh, so yeah, nineteen and nineteen. Yep. So 
He bites you for four points of piercing damage, and he claws you for another eight. Okay. Okay, Rowan's up. Um, trying to look at how big this thing is again. many feet is that? That spirit guardians that I have? Where does it say that? And let me just put it in the thing. Maybe I'll see it. You can always look it up in the compendium. Yeah. 15 foot. Okay. So I will... Moving that square. Okay. And of course, ignore T Rex, Jugs, Casimir. And all kids. And all the kids, yeah. Or, I'm not getting any kids in there. Okay, so you are attacking the werewolves? Yes. Even though they surrendered? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're attacking the T Rex. <clears throat> they're attacking the T Rex. They aren't attacking you. I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right. So it's one of those cases where they either start their turn. And... The first time they entered the field, I thought. Or all right. Effective it. creature. When it enters it for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. So on their turns, it's going to be a saving throw time. Yeah. Okay, Cly Clytrex. All right, I'm going to go bite the dire wolf. Okay. So I will just step forward a little bit and jump. Whoop. 21. Hits. Nice. I assume that hits. Oh, yes. Whoop. 39. Kills. So you basically chomp, pull the guts out of the direwolf, and it drops to the ground dead. Okay. Then I walk over here and tail swipe uh, the head dude. The head dude? The uh, Emil. Emil. Okay. He's kind of back. I guess you got reach. You could do it. Um, and then that one is 3d8 plus. Sixteen. Uh, that still hits. No, that was the damage. Oh. I, I did. Tw I hit him with twenty-seven. Okay. Um, Rictavio stands looking on with disgust. He says, "I leave you to your own devices," and walks off. Casimir right. joins him. Oh. Shit. Hang on, I gotta move your T Rex down to the floor. Ah, to the back. There we go. Uh, okay. Um, the. None of uh, them move on that one, do they? What's that? None of them move on that one. Yeah, I suppose we just trash that one. Jugs is up. Where are the children? Uh, in the cages. Actually, the lady could have gone on that one. Could have, but She's... she isn't. Right. I'm going to go up to the cages. I'm just having them all go on it. one. You're going to try and open one of the cages with the children in it? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, it's not an elaborate lock mechanism or anything like that, just enough to defeat a child, basically. So you're able to break open the lock and uh, open the cage, and uh, the children are absolutely terrified. They're just, like, shrieking and like cowering in the corner. I mean, there's basically these two monstrous T-Rexes 
which they've probably never, ever seen anything like this before. It's basically two big monsters stomping around. I'm going to step in there and I'm going to go down uh, closer to them and say, it's going to be okay. Just <laughs> close your eyes. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want to see... Right now, it's hard to even tell if you're doing any good or not, but... Uh, yeah. As far as if it works or if you do anything to calm them down. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, I'm trying Persuasion. to calm them down, but there's two T-Rexes and a bunch of werewolves. So yeah, it's... <laughs> if you want to make a disadvantaged persuasion check, go ahead. All right. Oh! <laughs> nice. All right, well, uh, this group, you actually do manage to calm them down enough so that they just basically cover their eyes. Like, you convince them that it's just... Uh, it'll be over in a little bit. You're just having a bad dream type of thing. Uh, Adren, Adrex, excuse me. You've got a whole bunch of werewolves climbing to you, cl clinging to you. Well, I got one in my mouth. So let's roll the hit. Let's roll the damage. That's uh, this guy, right? The first one you hit before? Yep. Uh, suppose I went in the case. 35 damage? Yep. He is... Basically, you chomp him in half. One okay. piece falls on either side of your mouth. And then I will um, whack him to you. Hits. Okay. Yeah, he's still up. He's starting to look pretty banged up. Um, at this point, Zukira or Zulika... Uh, she basically is, she's actually still on her knees. Uh, she says, please stop. We surrender. We don't want to fight you. Emil, back off. And, uh, Emil looks at her and slowly backs away. Uh, he is giving you a look of pure hatred, but he is backing off. And the other werewolves, try to do so too you would get attacks of opportunity if you wish to attack them as they retreat uh, as soon as she says that can i drop my concentration on the spell or can i or does that have to be something on my turn no if you were damaged during combat it would spell would drop instantly so i'd say it'd be like a flourish type of thing so you could drop it immediately if you wish okay then i'm gonna do that Okay, uh, you guys are no longer T-Rexes. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, all the uh, werewolves do have to uh, make saving throws to s see if they survive uh, your swirly spell there. Yeah, because, I mean, it was their turn. Yeah. Are you, if... Oh, I dropped it on her initiative. So. Do you drop it? Yeah. Okay. So then they don't have to save. Okay. I mean, they were supposed to on their initiative before, but they didn't go yet, did they? I don't. I don't remember. Anyway, that, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm just ruling that they she was basically ba telling them to back off and retreat and if, if you would have done so at the first sign of their submission yeah i'd rule that they would survive all right so yeah so they've backed off and the t-rexes go away the swirly nasty spirits go away so we're kind of standing head to head here what's your plan so i have <laughs> I asked them, are you going well, to release these children or I, not? I was going to say, are you going to rethink that <laughs> answer? Um, Zulika says, yes, we will release the children. And I say, you have to swear to never capture any more. So you'd have us die out then? Well, don't you have any other way to reproduce? You got a wife. We the only way for werewolves to make more werewolves is to infect. And if you can 
willingly convince an adult to join you. I don't care. Yeah, you, you can't, can't capture kids. kids. Cool. Yeah, that's not cool, dude. Fine. Check their ID first. <laughs> Check their ID. These children were captured by our former leader, Kirill, and he had them actually fight to the death, which we thought was foolish and unnecessarily cruel, which is I why agree. we stood against him. But capturing them, period, is yeah. asshole -ish. They have families. You it's care ecology. About your missus. It's the same thing for their parents. So it's okay for you to burst into a dungeon and kill someone that's living there? If they're stealing kids, yeah. Yeah, if they're stealing kids, <laughs> you your ass. Very well. I can see that this is something we cannot resolve in terms of differences of opinion. Uh, I promise not to capture and c kill any children. All right. And if we hear about children being captured or killed, whether you do it or not, we will be back. Keep that in mind. Understood. Give me my fucking sword back, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he almost throws it at you, but That's instead okay. just throws it on the floor in front of you and says, get out. I go, I, I do. Unlock the cages. And... I go up to the missus and I say, I apologize that our compatriot attacked you. She says, apology accepted. And I apologize Ooh. for our former leaders moved against you. All right, we're leaving now. Oh, we gotta um, get all the kids. Okay, so yeah, you've I got. Know. We gotta get all kids. Yeah, you gotta get all these kids in tow and everything. So we'll. Um... While they're doing that, I want to <laughs> tell Emil that I'm sorry it had to come to this, but he's, I really don't want to hear about He spits on the he he again. spits on the ground in front of you at your feet. He doesn't even look at you. What? He spits at the ground on your feet. Yeah. Not on your I feet. I will be but back at your feet. if I have to be. He doesn't, like I said, he is basically showing yeah. you his back. I'm, He's not acknowledging you exist yeah. at this point. He can hear me. I'm, that's okay. <laughs> um, and the number of children in this room, there are eight. So there are eight children imprisoned here and i'm not going to go through all their like yeah. all their roll their ages or everything but yeah and what was the name of the girl that we were looking for it's a martikov oh yolanda gonna... yes yeah um... i was going to ask for yolanda which one of you is yolanda okay yeah well there's um it's basically a very young like a two-year-old oh Dude, that is just mean. Yeah, I suppose we would have known that before we went there, probably, yeah. <laughs> her age, because they did say baby. Yeah, she was actually young, and you knew that beforehand. Yeah. I wonder if any of them have been uh, changed already, or no. I don't know if there's a way to tell. I think they got to figure out how to not be a werewolf. I don't know. We have like greater restoration or something. That'd probably do I it. I have removed curse. Would that do it? Oh, that would do it. I think. Well, would that do it. Um, do you have it cast prepared? I do indeed. Who are you gonna cast it on? Well, is anybody cursed? <laughs> Thought only Adrin. Yeah, Adrin and, and Rictavio. Rictavio so, got oh, bit. We don't too. know. He got bit, but we don't know if he failed or not. Okay, well, first, let's do we catch up with Rictavio? Uh, yeah, they. You see, uh, Rictavio and the tiger are waiting at the front door. Um, Casimir is not there. God damn it. Uh, he said that Rictavio, or uh, Van Richten, I call him Rictavio because his count, counter is named Rictavio still, uh, but uh, he says that um, Casimir was not cool 
with what went down in there, and he left. Uh, he, Van Richten is less than impressed, actually, but it sounds like, based on what you guys said, you managed to salvage some form of... Uh, you didn't slaughter everybody after no, they surrendered. I'm going to tell him I'm sorry it had to come to that, but they were stealing children and turning them into their kind. That's not okay. I they were doing what they needed to to survive. That is their point. That is their place in the psychology. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> I, oh, no, 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 I never agree to that. I think it's complete bullshit. Yeah, I think I guess, we're all good characters, so I doubt we'll ever agree yeah. to that, any of us. I asked right. Octavio if he's been cursed. Uh, I have been cursed many times, but no, as far no, as no, if you're talking no. recently, I have no idea. I was bitten by a werewolf. werewolf's bite. You don't know. All right. Or he doesn't know. I mean, and, and frankly, neither do you. <laughs> oh, all right Adrin. well then i will cast i can cast it twice today i cast remove curse on adrian and remove curse on van richten van richten okay um all right if that would do anything you can't tell <laughs> but he thanks yeah. you uh graciously for expending that uh, i don't know i'm sure if he could cast it himself actually he may be able to no i don't think he's that high high and level I don't know I'll have to check on that yeah. All right. well in any case I cast it on him okay so um, at this point I think is a good point to stop yeah, uh, I think you've... we should head back next week to deliver Yolanda <laughs> and figure out where the hell the rest of these babies are from or yeah, children. exactly. That's uh, I. Yeah, you'll have to talk to them and figure out where they were. But uh, you know that oh, there was only the one child normally at living at the winery. The others must right. be from surrounding townships. Yeah. We could talk to them on the way back and ask them if they know where they live. Right. But, yeah, assuming yeah. that they're not terrified of you, but they are. They are definitely more than willing to go with you guys the, out of the werewolf den because it doesn't sound like it was too pleasant of an existence for them. So anyway, we will call it there. Um, so what is your intent next week? You're going to drop the kids off. Um, you had mentioned possibly uh, going to see. Well, I, I actually, I wasn't really sure where you said you were going to go. At this point. Does our intent ever matter? Because for some reason. Yeah, we, it doesn't seem to. Where we go is never where we planned. <laughs> well, well rough we, I, if we got all the artifacts, why don't we just go kill Strahd? Or get, I think uh, we should get more people to help yeah. us. Well, the more we're... we have, okay. the more allies we have. Well, we First... keep pissing off the allies, apparently. <laughs> First, I think we should drop off the kids. Second, I want to go visit the, what was he, the bishop? Or what was he called? The bishop? The abbot? The, the yeah, abbot. abbot. Yeah, Yeah, because it's right, I mean, it's not that far away from the winery. Let's okay. stop and see what's up with the abbot. See if he can help he us can help us Strahd. with Strahd or to find out what the hell happened with the weird bride the he had. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure if it makes any difference, but you recall when you were in the uh, at Solenka Pass, you did notice that kind of nuke-like explosion coming from the direction of Kresk that one day when you were on watch. Uh, yeah, we oh. should go yeah. check that out for that reason too. I yeah. mean, it wasn't like a nuke-like explosion. I'm just like a, a, a something of that magnitude of power, I should say, emanated <clears> from there. Uh, it was actually. Uh, I'm guessing uh, the wedding didn't go. Rowan well. that noticed it, <laughs> and it was something he felt like some huge diminishing of power of the morning right. Lord in the area. Mm. And he, he kind of got this idea that the Abbot might've met his demise. Yeah. Let's check it. Okay. So and you're going to sp- say we go storm the castle and get rid of Strahd. Okay. So kids first, then back, double back to Kresk and then take the, take the battle to Strahd. Yep. yep. Okay. Sounds like a plan then. Uh, I think we're scheduled uh, two weeks from today and our normal because we offset yesterday. So it looks like 21st. Bad time, same bad channel. That's right. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll See catch you, you later. Have a good night. Yep, you Bye. too. All right.